I'd like to call to order the uh, committee meeting of the Committee on Academic Policies and Programs. Uh, I notice that we have a quorum. At this time, I'd like to introduce Vice Chancellor Paula Myrick Short uh, to go on over the agenda. Vice Chancellor Short. Thank you, um, Regent Thomas. We have three agenda items for the committee to consider today. Um, the first is the awarding of the Academic Excellence Award, which we be, will be presented to two of our community colleges for excellence. Uh, we have one degree program for you to consider for approval, proposed by Tennessee Technological University. And the last agenda item will be a, uh, an update on our Complete College Tennessee Act academic initiatives. It will be a brief update on three of those initiatives as well as our annual preliminary fall enrollment report. So those are our agenda items for the committee today. Thank you, Vice Chancellor Short. Uh, without any further discussion, you take up the first agenda item, please. Thank you very much. It's always an honor to um, come before you to recognize our institutions for excellence in academic initiatives. And I'm very pleased today that we are going to present two awards. We have two distinguished um, community colleges that are very deserving of this recognition. It will be presented today to both Cleveland State Community College and Jackson State Community College for their redesign of developmental mathematics. Both of these institutions have received national recognition, including the prestigious Bellwether Award given by the uh, Community College Futures Assembly. Uh, each have received this award for instructional innovation. Uh, both of these institutions have demonstrated significant improvement in student success for developmental courses and subsequent college level courses, increased retention and reduced costs. The work of the faculty, staff, and administrators at both Jackson State Community College and Cleveland State was part of our TBR system-wide initiative to redesign developmental education and was funded by a grant from the FIPSI, uh, from the Post-Secondary Fund for Improvement of Education, or a FIPSI grant. Each pres uh, institution will make a brief presentation to you today so you'll have a fuller understanding of why we believe both of these institutions are deserving of this award. Uh, we will begin with Cleveland State Community College. I'll introduce to you its president, Carl Height. He will introduce his colleague that will also um, participate in the presentation. Following that, uh, uh, Jackson State will make its presentation, and that will be headed up by its president, um, Dr. Bruce Blanding. So it's my pleasure now to turn the podium over to President Carl Hyde of Cleveland State. Thank you, Paula. Thank you for those kind remarks, members of the board. Tennessee is facing the same challenge that every state in the United States is facing. We've got to graduate more students from our colleges and universities. Unfortunately, we're not doing a very good job right now. And probably what stops so many students from completing a degree is that they just can't do the math. If you look at the number of students who are testing developmental math, it's significant, anywhere from 60 to 90 percent of the community colleges across the United States. There are huge implications for STEM, those professions that require science, technology, engineering, and math. If they do not have the math skills, those choice professions will not be available to these students. We at Cleveland State feel that we're meeting that challenge. At this time, I'd like to introduce Karen Weirich. She is the Department Chair of Math at Cleveland State. And Gary, you will like this. She is a graduate of Rome State Community College. Hi, we started our redesign in developmental math in spring of 2008, so we've been going about four years. We have also expanded it to college level math, so now anything below Calc 1 is done in the redesign format. Um, a couple of things, we were hoping the redesign was going to work, but what we realized in doing this was we had several other interesting things happen um, in terms of scheduling the redesign allowed our students to progress through their developmental math courses sort of at their own pace we have a lot of students complete the course and then either start the next course or complete multiple courses in the same semester we've actually had students complete four math classes in the same semester um, another advantage that we've got is in terms of scheduling 
we actually have several, several different classes meeting in the same classroom, which has sort of created a math on demand for our students. They'll call, especially at our little off-campus site, and say, hey, do you offer pre-cal? I need pre-cal. And we'll say, well, what day do you want it? What time do you want it? And we can find a class for that student. So that's been really advantageous to the students. Um, also, we have spread the redesign of our college level classes to our local high schools. We are now in four different counties, our four different high schools, and success rate has been about 100% in all of those classes, so that's been really great. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with NCAT. We, along with Jackson State, go with the NCAT model. That is the National Center for Academic Transformation. They have sort of some best practices that when we started our redesign, we used a lot of those best practices. What we do at Cleveland State is everything is in little bite-sized mini-mods, which means every week the student knows exactly what they're supposed to do. They have to attend lab, they have to attend class, they have to do homework, they have to take tests. So this has been really good and they're just not overwhelmed and wait until test time to study. Uh, another strategy for them is mastery learning. Now every student has to make at least a 70% on every assignment before they're allowed to move on. Um, we also do points for everything. Students will do the work if we give them points. They get points for coming to class, going to the lab, and staying on track. Um, that's been really good for them. It's sort of like a to-do list and they just check off as they're going through. Um, we, along with Jackson State, use My Math Lab. We've recently started doing the batch enrollment, so now when students walk into class, they are ready to begin working on day one. And that has been huge, and we appreciate your support for that. Um, a couple of results, I know what y'all are thinking, is does this really work? The students like it. As you can see from the numbers, all of the number success rates have gone up, some more than others. There's the developmental math increase success rates. Also, the number of students exiting the developmental math program has increased from 55 to 68%, which has been really great. College level math, you can read through those. Something I want to point out, the statistics level decreased slightly. Just to give you a little background, when the faculty member who was redesigning statistics started, she got data from all the teachers. She said, let me see your test too. What we found out was everybody was all over the board. So when she created the stat course, it was actually a much tougher course than what these students had actually been taking, which is true of all the classes. We didn't lower standards. We actually raised the bar a little bit. They must pass everything. So so don't think that, that we just sort of lowered the standards. This has been a positive for all the classes. Um, this is one of our students. I'm gonna let her talk for about 30 seconds, and I think she covers all of the background. She can have a lot more time than 30 seconds if she wants to. <laughs> I started with basic math and I didn't think I would last two weeks but I wasn't going to give up it's been the best thing it's it's given me a lot of confidence but they make learning fun I've learned more here at Cleveland State Math Lab than I have throughout my all of my school yeah, it's very challenging but it's well worth it Jacqueline came to our college at the lowest level of math, third grade, and she is now enrolled in pre-calc one. It's an absolutely marvelous story. Before I begin, I would be remiss. Uh, Dr. Jerry Faulkner was to have done this part of the program. He's my vice president for academic affairs. In fact, he was the gentleman that was in the, in the video. Unfortunately, his father passed away last night, and so he will not be with us. So our prayers need to be with him and his family at this time. OK, much ado about something. The question that may be asked, um, was this by chance, was this by accident, was there cause and effect in terms of what we did in the lab? 
And I will say there was cause and effect. And to make sure of that, we asked staffers at the Tennessee Board of Regents, Greg Schultz and Chris Tingle, to collect student data from three months before the redesign and from three months after the redesign. Their analysis showed that there was a strong positive impact of the redesign, not only on in success in the first math class, but in subsequent classes, even if the next class was college level. What's really more exciting is that their analysis showed no difference in success based upon gender or race. This means that the redesign will help us close the achievement gap for females and minorities. Let me tell you what's happened to our math enrollment at the college. It has grown 40 percent, reason being more students are getting to college level math. And for the first time, we did have more students enrolled in college level math than we did have in developmental. Now, uh, I have a number that I need to, we actually gave you, if you slide down too, yes. So there's a real advantage for retention, financially. That helped us tremendously. But the number is, I'm afraid I gave you the wrong number, the 50 percent. It was actually 62 percent. So we feel very good about that. Now, what about the cost to the institution? We're having more students now. We actually had a decrease in net salary and benefits. We decreased the cost per student credit hour from $105 to $54. And the cost per student cre uh, credit hour from $106 to $80. There were some costs in initiating the lab to start it up, but we recovered that with a technology access fee. I do want to make the point that um, this was a team effort. It required not just the math faculty, they did an absolutely marvelous job, but also the institutional technology support team, physical plant and maintenance in, in redoing the labs. And so what we're hoping to do, because we were so successful with this redesign, is that we are going to um, try to spread this redesign across the curriculum. And I have a special announcement to make. We learned about it yesterday. Title III is funding us $2 million over the next five years, and the major part of that uh, grant will cover the redesign of the curriculum at Cleveland State Community College so that we can get the same success rates in our other courses that we're getting in the math. So we hope to come back here someday, maybe with another award, because we've done it in another area. At this time, I'll take any questions. Thank you for that excellent presentation. Are there any questions or comments from members of the committee? There are a lot, there's a lot to be proud of in, in this presentation, very much. Okay, we thank appreciate you. appreciate it. Carl, I need to talk to you about that Title III grant real quick. <laughs> Dr. Short, thank you for recognizing Jackson State as well. Uh, Chancellor Morgan, uh, Chairman Thomas, uh, members of the Board of Regents, thank you on behalf of all of us of Jackson State Community College. Several years ago, I sat down with some of the staff, uh, notably uh, uh, Betty Frost, who is our, a professor of mathematics, and Mary Jane Bassett, who's the Dean of Developmental Studies, and I said, folks, we have to find a better way. We cannot afford to have the low success rate of students in developmental mathematics. Uh, as Dr. Hyde indicated, 70% plus of our students end up having to take developmental math, and if they don't succeed, that means they don't succeed in all that we have to offer, and that's not acceptable. We have to find a better path. We have to find a better way. Uh, I will do whatever I can in terms of the institution to support your endeavor, but you all are the ones to have to find a better way. And with that, I got out of the way, and what, what resulted from the work of these fine ladies and others as well is what they're about to talk to. Talk to. As you see, our redesign of developmental math is called SMART Math, and it is an acronym survive, master, achieve, review, and transfer. And those were the things that we were out to take care of. And Betty's going to tell you a little about that. Next slide. Some of the key features of uh, the smart math at Jackson State, we took 12 modules and replaced the three traditional developmental classes that we had been uh, teaching for years. Go back. Okay. Uh, the, uh, 
Instead of requiring all students to complete all their developmental math, we realized that not everyone planned on uh, being rocket scientists and did not need as much algebra as others. And so uh, their requirements we based on their educational and career goals. Uh, we had on, have on-demand assistance for our students. When the student has a question, they get the answer. And as any of you know, that's when you're most interested in learning, is when you need to, uh, is when you don't know the answer to the question. So there's on-demand assistance. The student gets immediate feedback on their uh, homework and their test. In the My Math Lab, when they're doing their homework, once they submit their answer, the uh, program will say, excellent, or it will say, sorry, that's not right, and they can try again. And so the student can keep on until they get it right. Uh, they have the opportunity to progress more slowly or quickly. Uh, you know, some students learn math quicker than others. But once you've learned the math, then you've learned it. And so we give the students the opportunity to learn at the pace that they need to in order to master the subject. And that is another component. Uh, math faculty have always felt like that the students would get to them and they don't know what they were supposed to. Well, the reason they didn't is we were figuring their grades based on an average. And you could mess up on a particular part of the uh, subject that you came from and still pass. But in, uh, in smart math, our students have to master everything before they can move on to the next topic. Uh, there's more frequent opportunities for success. The students uh, with the 12 modules, it's broken up into little uh, pieces and the students see one module at a time. And so they have this attitude, well, I can do this. And then they get through that module and then they have one more module to complete. So the students uh, have the attitude that they can, can do it instead of thinking this is something impossible. And then instead of like before, if a student was not successful in a math class, they would have to take the whole class all over again. Typically they would start at the uh, be uh, beginning and probably they knew the beginning part of the course and by the time they got to the part of the course they didn't understand, it was almost over. Well now our students start at the next required module where they were, uh, where they finished the last time. Some of them finish all their modules in one semester. We surprised ourselves actually in our success. Uh, the red represents before we did our redesign and uh, the bright green represents uh, after our redesign. This is the retention from fall to fall. The students that start out, say, in the fall 06 and are back enrolled in fall 07 before redesign was 32%. Once we started our redesign, uh, the students in fall 08 uh, that came back in fall 09 was up to 44%. Learning, of course, and that's what we're really there for, also increase. We have uh, 12, the 12 modules. We give post-test at the end of each module to see how much the students learned. Again, the red rec represents the traditional, and the green represents the semesters since we started our redesign in spring 08. Our students were more successful, and this was where Dr. Blandin offered his challenge to, to find something that would do better. 41% uh, of our students were passing developmental math before we redesigned. And you can see how uh, our students are now uh, much more successful, and we're still, we're working to, to keep on improving that, but uh, we're very proud of the success we've achieved so far. Of course, the big measure is, well, how good do they do when they get to college level? That's always the question I'm asked when I'm making a presentation. 
Well, I'm here to say they do better than they uh, would if they had not had smart math. We compared the students in smart math to the students uh, who did not take smart math, which is typically those who uh, take, took a placement test and it was determined they didn't need developmental math. And our smart math students do much better. A natural result of success and retention is cost savings. It, it helps this college, it helps the students, and we're about helping both. And so what has happened, as you see, is we have reduced the cost per student by over 30%. We track this very carefully using the NCAT forms and they are meticulous, so we know our numbers are correct. And we have saved the students money by the fact they don't have to take, they don't have to stay in developmental studies as long. If they want to finish the whole, what was once three courses in one semester, that lab is open from eight in the morning till nine at night. It's open on Saturday. We are there for them. They have a set class time, but we have tutors there all the time so that they can come and our online students take advantage of the nights and of the weekend of the Saturday. So we have helped that. We've helped the college, obviously, by moving them on through and getting them into college level courses, which is part of our goal, just retaining them. And the completion rate. Math is where we lose our students. They would get into the developmental math quagmire and we would lose them. Now they stay. You see that 75% increase in completing their developmental math so that they move on. So we're excited about that. We use our instructors and we use trained tutors. And they're there. Some of those trained tutors happen to be retired high school teachers. So we're glad to have them and our adjuncts tutor. We have gotten a lot of national attention Part of the FIPSI grant requirement was that we open ourselves and our redesign to the United States. And so um, we've had 33 campus visits to and from every state imaginable and others are coming or online to come. Of those we've, that I've managed to record because I can't keep up with them, We've had 79 phone calls and emails, and then we've done presentations all over the nation at many prestigious places, as you see, and then a lot of others that are not big names, but they were important to us. Some of the states have invited us to come. This is where we are. We, this is a little glimpse of what we look like. There are 80-something computers in there. We have two classes going on most of the time with 30 students each and 20 seats for others to drop in when they want to so that we can help them. We especially appreciate the support and the encouragement that we've had from TBR, from NCAT, and especially from our president, Dr. Blanding. And the next slide will tell you how to get in touch with us if you would like a copy of this PowerPoint, or if you would like to know more about Smart Math, or if you would like to come see us. We would love for you to come see us. Do you have questions? Thank you. That's a very, very impressive report. Dr. Blanding and, and your assistants, we congratulate you on that. And uh, now we'll turn it over to any questions. I think Regent Reynolds. Um, what are the lessons learned from this that you can take back to the high schools across Tennessee? I mean, because obviously if we're graduating students who are better in math coming out of high school to start with, um, you know, that's all the better for all of us in the final analysis. So what's the interface back to high schools? I think that what we have done is we've put the, the learning uh, back on the student and we've learned that if the student does the work, then they will understand the math. The student is not in a, prediction, a predicament of feeling like that they can't ask a question because everybody else will think they're dumb. And, and they don't get credit until they do the work themselves. Further questions? Comments? 
Regent Ferris. I was just going to ask you, I assume you're able to reduce your cost by moving the kids on through quicker. And then I think the president from Cleveland State about the decreasing the salaries or something. Let it, me share with you, because I think this does, is important, if I may. It seems to be a trend across the country, and I don't have anything against part-timers. Some of our best faculty are part-timers, but because of these budget cuts, many of the community colleges are just increasing their part-time faculty. This really requires a full-time faculty member. So what we've done as a result of the high-tech, high-touch approach, we're basically, we eliminate all the part-time faculty. We have tutors and lab assistants, but it, that's why we reduce the cost significantly. The full-timers, if you talk to the full-timers, they will not change and go back. They, they will. If I told the math folks that we're going to go back the way we used to do it, I'd be lynched. Uh, the faculty love it. The students love it. But let me come back to the high school question. For the Tennessee Diploma Project now, I really do believe that with four years of math, that should reduce the number of students testing into developmental. However, we've seen with the Tennessee Scholars Program, which has the same requirement, at least at Cleveland State, it reduced it a little, but not as significant as I would have thought with the four years of math. Now, as we mentioned, Karen, or Karen mentioned that we're in the high schools for dual enrollment, but that's college level math. What we'd like to see happen is work with the high schools to say that if Johnny or Susie takes the ACT at the end of their junior year and tests into developmental, that they could use that fourth year course as our developmental course, whether we deliver it or whether we train the faculty of the high school to deliver it, so that when Johnny and Susie leave high school, they'll be college ready, or ready for college level math. And to me, that could also be done in the reading and the writing, but, but we've still got to work through some things in order for that to happen. Thank you. Further questions or comments from any of these people that have presented? If not, Dr. Short. Um, thank you so much for uh, truly outstanding presentations, and I hope you're as uh, <coughs> stunned with these numbers as I've been watching this through our whole FIPSI grant and how these institutions have really just moved forward. And, Everything is centered on the student. I can't say that enough. Everything is about student success and what these two institutions are accomplishing and continue to accomplish. And so I just want to make that point. And what I'd like to do now um, is ask uh, you to come forward. Uh, Regent Thomas, also Vice Chair Duckett, would you come forward? And uh, Chancellor Morgan, so that we can present this uh, Academic Excellence Award to these two outstanding uh, institutions for their innovation and instruction. everything, let me make one comment, not everything we do at this board is as pleasurable as those two presentations have been. Uh, it was really, uh, makes us all proud. They have made us all proud. Thank you. Dr. Short. <clears throat> it's always agenda. wonderful to highlight the fantastic things that are happening on our campuses. It's always a pleasure. Um, we'll move to the second agenda item. Uh, you have before you a proposal um, uh, from Tennessee Technological University. They are proposing to establish a new Bachelor of Science in Environmental and Sustainability Studies. That new degree will have three concentrations, 
one in environmental science, a second concentration in society, culture, and communication, and a third in environmental technology. Now this is a 120 credit hour undergraduate degree. It will focus on developing uh, their students' ability to find solutions to environmental problems through interdisciplinary work, teaching and learning. Uh, it does align quite well with their vision and mission at TTU as the state's comprehensive university known for offering high quality programs in the STEM disciplines. It will graduate um, students uh, that will meet both a local, regional, state, and national need. Uh, their goals are to prepare students to analyze and propose sustainable solutions for those complex real world environmental problems that most of us read about and think about every day to help them understand and integrate ideas from the ecological, social, and physical sciences with technological solutions. The goal of the program is also to create lifelong learners and to lead socially responsible lives that sustain the Earth's fragile environment. We have reviewed, uh, staff have reviewed this proposal, uh, carefully um, analyzed it in terms of the new requirements from the Tennessee Higher Education Commission for programs that are focused on the institutional mission. And we believe that it uh, is a um, strong um, um, new addition to the baccalaureate programs at Tennessee Tech University. And we recommend your approval. Ladies and gentlemen of the committee, you've heard the presentation and recommendation of Dr. Short. Uh, is there, are there any questions or comments of Dr. Short, for Dr. Short? If not, I'll entertain a motion. This must be uh, approved by a voice vote. I entertain a motion to approve the recommendation. Motion been made by Regent Reynolds. Is there a second? Second by Regent uh, Varden. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in, this is a voice vote. All in favor say aye. Uh, opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimously. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I know that they'll be very excited that this is moving forward. Thank you. The uh, last agenda item um, uh, involves a couple of uh, brief updates to you, three updates on uh, specific initiatives that uh, we have underway at the Board of Regents related to the uh, Complete College Tennessee Act, and then finally, a brief update on our fall enrollment. As most of you know, we uh, have undertaken the development of an articulation trans transfer pathway. Uh, it, this has been a joint effort between the Tennessee Board of Regents and the University of Tennessee to develop a comprehensive transfer pathway and again was stipulated in the Complete College Tennessee Act. And as you've heard me say previously, we've worked uh, over a 10 month period, bringing together 28 faculty groups uh, involved uh, were over 450 faculty from both UT and TBR to uh, develop the uh, curriculum that would constitute the 60 hours in 49 uh, disciplinary areas uh, for transfer, seamless transfer between our institutions. Uh, funding to support our work did come from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation through a grant that we wrote and we were successful uh, in being funded. One of the things I want to point out here and you'll notice on the screen, this really is, captures the um, web page of our transfer uh, Tennessee Transfer Pathways uh, website. Uh, and it's a website that we developed, again, collaboratively with UT. Uh, and it serves as a one-stop comprehensive uh, reference point for students, for faculty, advisors, administrators, and hopefully high school counselors and high school students. It's now fully operational. Uh, and uh, I can tell you from some of the analytics that we've uh, been looking at um, compliments of the uh, Business Media Center at TTU. Uh, as of last week, we had had over 6,805 uh, visits to that website on an average of about 220 visits per day. So that's, that's pretty heavy traffic uh, from, from my perspective. 
Um, there have been over 39,050 page views. So each visitor to our website is spending, uh, is viewing about six pages on that website before they leave it. Um, some of the top cities that are generating this traffic are Knoxville, Nashville, Memphis, Oak Ridge, and Chattanooga. And we've also had visitors that have come from North Carolina, Georgia, Texas, Florida, and Illinois. So uh, I think the word is out that uh, we're doing something special here. Um, and we've also been interested in noting which disciplines are receiving the most traffic on our website. Um, the top paths visited are business administration, accounting, pre-nursing, criminal justice, and computer science. So I thought you'd find that interesting today to know. Um, I did want to let you know that um, we did establish a year ago the uh, TBRUT Articulation Council uh, as a council that is composed of both TBR, UT faculty, and administrators. Uh, we do meet regularly and we are monitoring this process through this year. We will track progress and success of our students who enter the pathway. Uh, we're going to be working with Tennessee Tech to maintain our website and improve it, uh, look at curricular adjustments that we should need to make, and also might mention to you that we'll be looking at degrees that we want to develop and add to the pathway. Uh, this year we will be, be developing an associate of fine arts degree so that it will articulate into the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree at our universities, and previously we did not have that and therefore do not have that transfer pathway at the moment. So I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have about yes, the transfer Regent pathway. Garland. Dr. Short, I just wanted to mention that I had an opportunity to go online and just play basically with this new um, website and it is amazing how easy it is to use. You can either go by school or by, you know, whatever you want your major to be, but it was, I was just delighted to see not only how user friendly it was, but how thorough it is in terms of giving you every step, every piece of information so that it's good for parents, for students, for you know, faculty, anybody to use. So I just want to commend you on absolutely wonderful job for that. Thank you so much. We actually had students and registrars and other folks give us feedback on it. If it didn't work for students, we might as well not do it. So they were our best critics. Right. So thank you for that comment. And I also um, want to mention, uh, and I don't want to embarrass uh, Regent Thomas, but Regent Thomas did attend the very first meeting of our TBRUT uh, Articulation Council. And um, we appreciate the fact he stayed the whole time. Uh, but I think you said you might not come back, right? You're stealing my thunder. Oh, but sorry I was about going that. I to admit that I attended the first meeting of this council and I thought that it was an impossible task, and I didn't want to be a part of an impossible task, so I never came back. No, <laughs> seriously, uh, I cannot tell this audience and this board uh, the contribution that Dr. Short made to getting this transfer pathways accomplished and the University of Tennessee system. It was truly a joint effort, but our quarterback on that was Dr. Short, and she deserves a tremendous amount of credit, and I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious, after that two hour meeting, I thought it was an impossible task. <laughs> so congratulations, thank you. Any further comments or questions on this item? If not. Thank you, and thank you for those kind comments. I appreciate that. I also wanted to update you on another, the second uh, CCTA initiative that uh, is in legislation um, and highlight uh, the fact that our universities and community colleges have all come together uh, and have created dual admissions agreements among them. You have a list in your board book uh, of all of the dual admissions agreements that exist. I think that's phenomenal that our campuses have sat down and worked these out with their sister institutions. You will note on the screen I wanted to highlight the uh, unveiling of the dual admissions agreement between Southwest Tennessee Community College and the University of Memphis. Uh, they actually had a formal uh, signing and held a, uh, an enjoyable event uh, to celebrate the 
coming together of those two institutions uh, in a joint admissions uh, process. And um, you'll note Dr. Uh, President Shirley Raines and President Nate Essex uh, together with students uh, in uh, Provost uh, Faldry in that event that occurred. And similar types of events have occurred across our system among our institutions. Several of our um, universities have as many as six uh, agreements with community colleges, and some agreements are with institutions that are out of state. You'll note that Austin P has an agreement uh, with Hopkinsville uh, Community College. So uh, we're we're doing everything we can to uh, assist students uh, in coming to our institutions and being successful. Just a couple of the benefits of dual admissions: students that are duly admitted to the community college and the university simultaneously. Uh, have co-advising between faculty at the community college and the university. They're being given library and other, other access to other facilities and other privileges at the universities so that that student begins to feel like a part of that university long before they ever make that leap and transfer uh, to the uh, university. So it's, uh, again, uh, a strategy that we believe will help increase student success. And I want to commend our campuses and the University of Tennessee campuses for engaging uh, in the hard work to, to get this done this year. So uh, we'll keep you posted on how it's progressing. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments on this latest on dual enrollment? Dual admissions. <laughs> Excuse me, dual admission. If right. not, Dr. Short, do you have any further comments? Uh, not about this. I'm ready to move on to the third, uh, if, if the committee is agreeable, move to the third CCTA uh, uh, initiative. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, I did want to highlight that we have uh, undertaken a planning year to create the cohort-based uh, block schedule accelerated programs. This is part of the CCTA's um, uh, uh, requirement based on the development of a unified community college system and in that process uh, the law calls for implementing these accelerated cohort based block scheduled programs and I did want to let you know that uh, we have worked on that this year and we have implemented uh, a set of programs that we're piloting this fall in a number of our community colleges such programs as the Associate of Science and Teaching as a uh, accelerated program, culinary arts technical certificate, the business management, AAS, Associate of Applied Science, and a number of other areas, logistics, office management, pre-allied health. Uh, the pilots are underway at our institutions. Uh, I wanted you to see some faces of some real people that are engaged in those pilots this fall and will be this spring and be able to read some of the comments that uh, uh, they have made about the opportunities that they see in being a part of this. You'll note students at Columbia State Community College engaged in their accelerated pathways, and then students uh, from um, uh, Motlow State Community College also. Uh, and, and much like the Skills USA comments that you heard today, these students are saying to us, I couldn't do it if I hadn't had this way of uh, making this happen. Um, and we're also fortunate that AT&T uh, has funded some student scholarships to support the accelerated pathways and Chancellor Morgan was uh, at the event with the Tennessee AT&T AT &T president uh, to kick that off and award and recognize two students that day who are receiving $1,000 scholarships um, to participate in the program. So that's my report on the CCTA uh, and three uh, academic initiatives that we have been working on. I'm happy to answer any questions about that also. Any questions, comments? Thank you. All right. And the last agenda item is our annual uh, report on enrollments. You have a sheet that was passed out to you. Um, I won't read that to you. I just simply will highlight the fact that um, uh, even though we have seen uh, a small decrease overall in enrollment this fall, I want to remind you that between fall uh, 2008 
in fall 2011 now, we experienced a 15% growth in enrollment in the Board of Regents. That's over 25,000 new students that came to us since 2008. So we've bumped our enrollments up here and they're starting to kind of level off, but they're not dropping. And that's, that's the takeaway message that I want you to have. It would have been difficult for us to, to, to sustain that enormity of enrollment over time, and probably the economy had a lot to do with that. Um, the universities have grown a small percentage um, uh, this, this fall, 0.8%. Our community college enrollment did fall by 1.9 percent over the same time period, but again, I point out the enormous increase that they saw, they have seen over the past two years, uh, and so the good news is uh, that there's not a drop from that high level we've attained at that point. As in, uh, is in past years and as seems to be traditionally across the country, um, Female students make up around 60% of the university enrollment, uh, and, and that's also the same in the community colleges. And we are um, uh, becoming more diverse in our student enrollment. Our African American student enrollment uh, makeup is 24.2% in our universities and 18.9% in our community colleges. And again, um, that reflects a higher number than the overall representation. Our dual enrollment numbers have certainly increased, uh, actually a 7% increase since last fall. Our campuses have been very aggressive in meeting the needs of our high school students in that regard. And I just wanted to point out that we do have um, graduate education in our institutions. Our graduate students account for about 15% of our overall enrollment. And at ETSU's College of Medicine, College of Pharmacy, uh, that number increase accounts for an additional 588 graduate students this year. 73% um, of our university of student, uh, students attend full-time, while only 47% of our community college students. Um, I suggest if you have specific questions about, um, because you do have enrollment data from our individual institutions, if you have a question about the enrollment at a particular institution, you may want to talk to the president of that institution. But generally, those are some of the key things that we have uh, been able to, to discern from our, our uh, enrollment numbers this fall. Thank you. Those are interesting statistics, and uh, I think progressive, but interesting, too. Any uh, comments or questions on that report on enrollment? If not, Dr. Short, does that conclude your that concludes the uh, agenda. agenda. Thank you very much, and thank you to the committee. Thank you for your diligent work. Uh, any, any further comments or questions that come before the committee? If not, we are adjourned. Thank you, Regent Thomas. Uh, at this time, I would ask the members of the Finance Committee to come forward, uh, because that will be the next committee uh, meeting that we conduct. Regent Ferris is chair of that committee. Uh, Regent Getz, Regent Giscom, Regent Reynolds, uh, Regent Rohde, and Regent Roddy.